like my heart, like the detail. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's episode, we're gonna be talking about getting the job with Emirates. Actually gonna be talking about what plays a role in you going forward. First part, a lot of people ask me about credentials, like am I at the right age? Am I too young? Am I too old? Some people say, I'm only 21. Am I too young? I don't have enough life experience or work experience. And some people say, I'm in my 30s. Am I too old? People in between will be like, oh, I've never worked in aviation, am I eligible? Oh, I've got a scar on my face. I've got a scar on my face, like, I've got two of them here. English is not my first language, I'm not very confident, do you think I'll get the job? For me, those qualifications and those criteria, it's there so that they know what they want and so that it weeds out any people who don't know what they want. And it takes out the people who are not too sure whether they even just believe in themselves. I'll confess, I actually applied for so many airlines, most of which I was actually not eligible for. And the thing that made me not eligible was because a lot of these airlines required me to be a citizen of their country. So when Singapore Airlines was like, you must be a Singapore citizen, I was like, or maybe not. And I'd send in my resume anyway. Like, I have to try. I have to, I have to try first. I need to put myself in the game so that I can see what's gonna happen to me. If I don't put myself in the game, I've already said to myself, like, I'm out. If I can't put myself in the game, who else is gonna put me in the game? You know what I mean? So, from the forefront, Okay, read the rules, but don't, they're not Bible. They're not, the, they're not the be all and end all of your career. It's just a guideline. Any of that self doubt, it might be challenged when you get there. And maybe the whole entire purpose of you applying isn't for you to get a job, but for you to practice self belief and self confidence. I know that sounds deep, but I swear to you guys, so much of what happens in life, it's a gift to us so that we can come out of our limiting beliefs and so we can come into something a lot better than that. Look at it that way. Number one, you've got to be in it to win it. Now you're thinking, is it worth your time to make your resume to do it knowing full well that you're not going to get the job? If this is something that you want and you're not too sure about getting it because of something that you don't believe you have, what was the other alternative? What else were you going to do with that time that you were going to do making your resume? I truly believe that there is no such thing as a waste of time. In every millisecond that we spend, there is something to be learned. And sometimes it might be like we learn things like contentment or we learn learn how to be patient or we learn how to regain power if we realize that we're not sitting in an environment that you're like, I don't want to be in this conversation. There's always an underlying message. It's, it's not just always at the top. Now, okay, what's next? So you've written your resume and now you're going to the open day. Now with Emirates, it's almost like there are two levels before you get to the proper interview. The first one is an open day. This day is also known as the CV drop. This is where you drop off your resume. You go there, you don't know what they're looking for except for the stuff that they've told you on a piece of paper. And you go there and you're like, right. Am I gonna get called back? What kind of conversation am I gonna have with this one resume that I'm handing in? So that's one phase, and then the next phase after that is an actual assessment day. So first of all, let's talk about CV drop. What do you need to do to get in? Well, before we talk about what you need to do to get in, let's consider the facts. So Emirates Airline is a business. So in a business, whenever they're looking to hire people, there is a certain number of vacancies. So let's say if there are two vacancies and 1,000 people come here, competition is really tight. I'm always in two minds. One part of me says that on, on, the deep, on the deep level, for some people, you need to be rejected to build resilience. And that's, that's for you as a whole in, in the big picture of your life. So that's one level. There are lots of lessons to be learned in getting the job right away or getting what you want right away. Sometimes we don't get what we want right away because what we want doesn't serve the greater good of ourselves as people, right? And maybe it's just not our path right now. So that's one thing. Let's just, let's just call that like fate. Things that happen in the world to shape you into the best person that you can be. That's completely int intangible and we have like no control over that. And then there's this side. Now the other side is kind of like, what do you do? What do you physically do to make you stand out and make sure that you're going for it in the best way possible? Okay, this is probably what, the one that you're most interested in and the one that you have the most control in. And then whatever happens here, that actually contributes to this side. This is the you, all of the events happening for you to shape you in the best possible way to help you build your best life. Now you've gone in, you've handed in your CV, or you're there and you're about to hand in your CV. So you're thinking, what do I do? According to the rules, you should like 
not be on your phone. You should dress impeccably, similar to what you would look like as a flight attendant. You should be polite, so you should smile. Now these are the technical how-to steps. I will challenge that and say, what about the part where you get to be yourself? What I mean by that is, think about you when you're around your friends and your family. Who are you? What are you like? My guess is that you're pretty friendly, like you're open, you're light-hearted, you like to laugh. You're just a pleasant person to be around, to the people who know you the best. Be that. Do that. Be that. This is a tricky video to kind of film because it's almost like I'm saying to you, like, have more confidence, be more, like, chill. But the reality is, you've got to remember, like, Emirates wants to hire people who are going to be able to get along with their existing teams. So behaving and being perfect and holding back doesn't really demonstrate anything about you. It doesn't really demonstrate what it's going to be like to take you and contribute to their existing workforce and contribute to their existing, you know, customer and clientele. The airline wants you to fit into their workforce. The airline wants you to understand and fit in and embrace their values. So what does that look like in terms of behavior? Well, Emirates is a safety and service based kind of business. So when you speak with the recruiters, you know, treat them like a passenger. Like how would you treat a passenger? Would you even call them a passenger? Maybe you would call them a guest, something like that. Put in your mind that you don't need to impress them with intelligence or, you know, all of your work experience. Like, yes, it's important to say those things because it gives them an idea of how much training you will need in order to provide safety, security and service. They also want to know like, are you able to follow instructions? Now, outside of that, you just think to yourself, okay, how can I treat this person in the same way that I would treat a customer? Tune into that. So when you go to your open day, think that everyone around you is a potential customer. Think that they are a potential person who's going to fly on your plane and they've never been to your city. Start talking to them in that way. But what's the moral of this story? The moral of this story is first, you've got to be in it to win it. Whatever you are worried about in terms of yourself, whether you're enough to go for the job, take those beliefs and put them in a bin. Put them in a bin and apply. Go to the open day. You never know how far you're going to get if you don't even put yourself in that situation. So give yourself a chance to win. Give yourself a chance to win. Please do. That's the best thing that you could do. And don't let anybody tell you that that's not good. Like, that's not a good idea. And if it ends up being unsuccessful, like, who cares? Who cares? The whole purpose is like, you stand up for yourself and you do the thing that you want to do. Okay, the end. The next lesson is tune into your soft skills. What are soft skills? Skills which are not measurable by one written test. What I mean by that is, for example, me. I learned how to speak Spanish. I'm not very good at it at all, but it's a skill set which I can learn. I can read books, I can practice, and I can say that today I'm a beginner, but in one year's time, I'm going to be intermediate or advanced. Tick. If I speak very clearly, very fluidly, then you can say I'm an advanced Spanish speaker. Now that is a technical skill or a hard skill. When you're in the setting of like an assessment, your technical skills and your credentials will play this much of a role into whether you'll make it or not. What people pay attention to are your behaviors. These are your soft skills. Soft skills, an example of soft skills is like listening, active listening skills. Another soft skill might be teamwork your ability to play within a team. Another soft skill would be confidence. And these are skills which you develop with life experience and after you know, you've been through situations and you just hone these kinds of soft skills. So if you're going to the open day, just look at your resume and go, okay, is all of my experience on there? Yep. Do I know enough about the company? Yep, no problem. It's knowledge. That's knowledge. So great. So you fulfill that role. When you go to the open day, don't focus too much on having the perfect answer for questions. Focus on your ability to listen to a question so that you have time to think about your true answer. It's much better to understand a question and answer it in an honest way rather than to assume you know the question and then give an answer which is like way off the planet. I hope this video has been helpful. 
second the more specific you are with your questions the more specific I can be with my answers hopefully this video has helped and if you did find it handy give me a thumbs up if you have any comments or questions please pop them in the comment section down below and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please do I don't have a standard posting schedule like I don't post to YouTube on a standard like roster if you want to receive more of this kind of content and not miss out on it click on the notifications button so that you get notified every time I have a video otherwise you can sign up to my mailing list where I will be giving written materials yes I hope this has been handy for you adios bye bye